And definition of fear for me is, I'm gonna just use a, a, a race as an example. Everybody starts off at the same point and everybody's finish line is at the same point. That's fair. Whatever happens from starting to finish, um, given a race standpoint, meaning no setbacks or anything like that, that's all free game. That to me is fair. So if I'm from this part of uh, the world, you're probably a part of another part of the world. Um, we both, you know, are equal in every way. We both have the same income, whatever. Uh, the first one to like a million dollars is, is the winner. We both have the same opportunities. We're in different parts of the world, yes, but we have the same opportunities, same amount of money. It's just who has the will and who has the, I guess, the want to get to where they need to be or to get what they need, you know what I mean? Also, probably number 14, red corner from Jeff Vick in New York, Khalid Lee. 
Lee Falindo, um, 25, and I fight at uh, 152 pounds. Amateur record is 25 and 9. Uh, and then we're here in uh, Oxnard, California to uh, participate in the final qualifiers for the Olympics. Started fighting maybe two and a half years after I started training. Um, did the Golden Gloves in 2016, lost in the semifinals. Um, did it in 2017, um, lost in the finals. Uh, in 2019, I participated as an open class fighter um, and I made it to the finals again. I lost in the finals again um, at 152 Open in Madison Square Garden. And um, those, I guess, those losses or how many losses I have um, just gave me the experience to push forward, uh, to learn, and eventually, you know, push for the Olympics. Uh, and that's exactly what we're here. Uh, it's, it's something that you can't really describe. It's just something that you have to, to do. And, you know, boxing is where it's like, everybody got a plan until they get hit. Everybody thinks like, oh, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be that. Your one, one good one, one solid one, we'll see what you're about, you understand? So I've been through that. You know, I, I, I swam, I, you know, nearly drowned, came out, survived. So I, I know what it takes and I know what I have and I know who I am. So I know where we can take it, and I know why I'm doing what I'm doing.
no matter what, I still never know. Especially with the judges, I, I don't know. So I could outbox a guy, you know, whatever, and I might lose. So I don't know, at that time, I'm just thinking, you know, I feel like I win. If I win, I win. If not, you know, fuck it, it's unfortunate. But I just don't know, you never know, you never know. in a fight where um, I was resting and I need to do a active recovery. Pop the jab, touch the jab. Uh, felt a little bit at home, um, but it was a win nevertheless. Learn from it, learn from it. So we got a Tuesday, looking to rest today, uh, drop the weight tomorrow, and take care of business on Tuesday. Something with the shit on it, then you got all that. You know what it is, so Sweat all on you, and you got to dry it down. Spandex, too. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do my butt ass one time. Yeah, right? Might have to butt ass one time. <clears throat> So how much did you lose in 15 minutes? About a pound and change. 15 minutes, pound and change. Um, what do you think? Cut it there, sleep in it, and finish the rest of the morning, right? I'll be 53. Can't eat a fucking banana. Yeah. This is going for a bad long, for whatever reason. Yeah. Get some fucking sleep, son. I gotta buy some strawberries. 
Because the oranges and apples, they putting too much on me. When you digest them tomorrow, yeah, all that shit come out. I mean, by that time, my metabolism is going to be burning. You know what I mean? So I'll be able to get that weight off fast. You know? I'm not playing this one. It's the last one. Yeah, one one shot, I'm taking it. What does it mean to you? It means everything. It's like, um, in my opinion, it's, it's the start of like a, a good chance of a new life, a better life. When it comes down to the dudes that, you know, really make the Olympics, um, they have a, a, a better professional career. This is something that is not only gonna help, it will change, it will change my life and everybody that's around me. You know? Um, think about it. Maybe, let's say even two years from now, everything goes right according to plan. Um, you know, signed by whoever, top promoters, building our resume, even starting out first like five fights, 10 fights, even making like, I don't know, 10, 20 grand per fight, that's that's smooth, that's good. It's the buildup of it, you know, we're building up maybe five years later, um, you fight maybe for a world title, you get maybe 200K for that fight, you build up, start hitting, you know, millions for the fight, you build up, you know, your style, everything, start making most even shows, it, I see a bigger picture to it, and I know where I could get to. Boxing could change your life, or it could, it could fucking destroy, you know, it. It could destroy it. <laughs> People literally put their everything in this, and sometimes don't even get half of the return that they think they're gonna get. So it's, it's a big risk, you know what I mean? I don't have nothing else. Boxing is what I have. You know, I do personal training on the side. That's cool, but it's not. I'm not trying to do that forever. <clears throat> so, generally, I think I told you before, I have a bit of PD like Take a cat, tap it for like 25, 30 minutes or 20, 30 minutes. Kind of give you the extra energy you need to feel like you're human. Feel good. Um, waters. This is his section. We got the apple <laughs> and the fucking. The, what is it? Lunchables? I got Lunchables. Yogurt, Gogurt. Yeah. I pretty much have the bananas, the oranges, the apples. Yeah, you got all the healthy shit. I got all the unhealthy shit. But. After wins, I'm coming up. <laughs> He's coming up. He's <laughs> going up to the house. I'll tell you that shit on me. <laughs> Average age will maybe be between 18, 18 about 24, 23, 24. Maybe my age too. Um, because by that time, you know, you're competing sometimes, well, most of the time you're competing against kids that have been doing it since they were young. So when you compete against kids that have been doing it since they were young, they're already up there. They made a name for themselves. Okay. But the promoters are already looking at them um, very early on. Um, so they tend to turn pro much faster than, you know, guys like me that start late. 
I guess, people that, you know, looking from the outside, they say, oh, you're 25, didn't turn pro yet. Um, age is, you know, time is against you. So I'll probably say for them, yeah, it may seem that way, but for me, it's not. Because I know I can be one of those guys that's like 35, 40. I'll still be sharp. I'll still be fast. So that's just me knowing my body. It's like, um, see, my competition, you know, it's, uh, I ain't gonna lose. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of ego in there too, you know what I mean? It's a given, you know, boxers have egos. Everybody wants to be the best. Nobody wants to come in second place at all. So uh, that right there, you can feel certain tension. And, you know, sometimes you know a couple guys. You guys talk, you guys hang out. Um, but for me personally, going into that room, um, going into that fight, I don't, don't want to speak to anybody. Well, my name originally is Jonathan Earl. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Um, I've been boxing since I was 14, 15 years old. Um, I have just about maybe a little over 50 fights, 42 and seven. It's a little, I think, yeah, right, right there, right at, right at 49. Um, I have about 15, 16 uh, Junior Olympic fights. So I've been fighting for I've been fighting for a long time now. Um, yeah, I tore my rotator's cuff when I was 20 years old, and I uh, basically been a trainer, a personal trainer ever since. Basically, what happened was I was training, and I was getting ready to turn pro. Um, this was like maybe a little bit right before my 21st uh, birthday, and um, I was training to go pro, and uh, basically I had a I check, you know, regular checkup, whatever. Doctor tells you, uh, you have a slight tear in your rotator's cuff. So, you know, they give you the basic recommendation, PT, and just to take it easy and so on, you know. And I did the exact opposite. And uh, basically tore, tore it all the way through, almost all the way through. So it came to the point where I either needed to get surgery um, for it, or basically I was not gonna be able to box again. Um, so basically what, what ended up happening was I, I chose not to do surgery um, because at the, at the time too, also I was young. I was on like, I have a crazy background. So I was on my, I was basically on my own at 20 years old. So I had to pay bills. So it was just a choice of, I just started here at the gym. Do I make money or risk it on a surgery and never be and that maybe I'll never come back from, you know what I mean? So it was like, I, I chose the job and I chose the money, you know? Oh, well, at the age of, at the age of yeah, about eight. At the age of 18, I was number eight in the country. So, I was, you know, I was one of the best guys. You know what I'm saying? When I was a kid, 16 years old, I was sparring with Zab Judah and Paulie Majinagi. You know what I mean? So, at that age, I mean, they was whooping my ass. But at that age, to be in the ring with some good, with guys like that, you know what I mean? And at least do three, four rounds with those type of guys, like, 
that 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 meant a lot for me, you know what I'm saying? Like that was something for me, you know what I'm saying? So um I mean, I'm content with what I did, you know what I mean? And it's not like I'm broken. I can still kind of do a little something, you know what I'm saying? I can get in and do a couple of rounds, but you know, I'm content with what I did as far as boxing, I guess it wasn't like meant to be, you know what I mean? So it's just more at this point, like just sharing my knowledge with other people. That's pretty much why I train, you know what I'm saying? And because the money's good. <laughs> I grew up in, in gangs. I was a crip when I was younger and um, it wasn't a proud moment of my life, but I was doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing, you know, dealing drugs and, and stuff like that. Um, ended up dropping out of high school and like, just overall shit was going bad for me and stuff, you know? So, um, basically that's what ended up happening. My mom ended up kicking me out and I ended up pretty much being on my own, you know what I'm saying? And it was just, that shit was just a sucky ass part of my life really. So it was like, I had to become a man like early, you know what I'm saying? And I already had like shit from my father's shit. So I really didn't really have a father either. So it was like, my whole shit was just fucked up. So I had to get my shit right basically. 19, 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like, at that point, it was like, I was doing it for the money, then I needed to get money, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, I kind of went, fuck life, I'm gonna be boxing, I'm gonna be a boxer anyway, you know what I'm saying? And then I kind of got screwed over, couldn't box anymore, and then I'm like, fuck boxing, I gotta make money now, you know what I'm saying? So that's just, that's just what it is, and I was just in a fucking fucked up predicament, and I was just trying to get it any way I could, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got in a lot of trouble, you know, but different things got arrested a lot of times and shit like that, so, yeah, whatever. You seem like a totally different person than that person. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was a very, very, I guess I, that's what helped me with boxing, too. I was very violent back then, you know what I'm saying? Like, carry guns and shit like that, and it was just, it just wasn't a good look, basically, you know what I'm saying, as a kid. Back then, when you look now, but, I'm not mad about it because that made me who I am now, you know what I mean? I know what I can do. I know the shit that I'm capable of doing, so there's no need to do and all that. There's no need to, because I'm in better times now, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm living better, I'm eating better, I'm around and surrounded by better people, you know what I'm saying? So I've grown up all the way through and there's no need to resort back to any of that shit, you know what I'm saying? I actually don't, I don't talk to either or my parents, actually, so it's kind of like, the only one that I really consider my family really would be like my sister. Um, yeah, and that's really it. I don't talk to anybody. My aunts, uncles, nobody. So they kind of like, uh, they kind of like, if you want to put the word, like they kind of like shun me, basically, in a way. So now when I'm adult enough, then they kinda, everybody's kind of open arming me because I'm successful and I'm doing my thing now. I'm kind of shunning them back, you know what I mean? Because when I was asking people for help and when I was going through it and, you know, in the mud, sleeping in the streets and all this other shit, and I asked people for help, nobody helped me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, not to say like, yeah, now it's my turn, I'm gonna get y'all back. It's like, no, fuck y'all, basically. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. Me and my father haven't spoke since him and my mom divorced when I was 17 years old, or separated, they're divorced now, but we haven't spoke since, since I was 17. He put his hands on my mom's. Yeah, so. If I wasn't boxing, like, period? Like, if you if you didn't start boxing, like, if you didn't get into it the way that you did. Oh, like, how I got into it? Yeah, and I just didn't get intro to boxing like that? I'd probably be dead. Yeah. I'd probably be dead. I couldn't even say that I'd be in jail, because I was just too wild, right? I was just real. I was very, 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 like, just, like, snap violent, like, you know what I mean? So it was just, like... Nah, I'd be dead, for real, 100%. If I went to jail, I probably got killed in jail. Just cause I was just, I didn't care, my mouth was crazy, I didn't answer to nobody. You know, you're young, you think everything is, has no rules, you think life has no rules for you, you know what I mean? And you're just like, I don't give a fuck, fuck you, fuck you, fuck, you know what I mean? It's just like, that's how I was. I didn't care about anybody but myself. And at that time, it was just like, somebody could have told me, I, with a knife, I'll stab you, and I just, Fuck you, I don't care. <laughs> so let's go. You know what I mean? I just would, so I would 100%, to me, I, I think I would 100% be dead. Or if I did end up going to jail, I would have got murdered in jail. It's one or the other. There wasn't no life sentence. There wasn't no none of that shit. Like, I would have got myself into some bad situations. 
Because even when I was getting myself out of this shit, I was still getting into bad situations. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, so. Do you keep in touch with any of the guys that you used to roll with? It's really whack to say this, and I don't want to sound like a hood, like redundant, but most of my people are literally dead or in jail. And that's like, I know it sounds like everybody says that shit, that's like the line or whatever, but I would say most of my people are dead more than they are in jail. Almost everybody that I grew up with. There's not one person that I literally grew up with from when I was a kid that, nah, that's around now. They either, they either, uh, Fiends, they got they got put on like they got into the drugs and shit like that, and now they're either like hardcore like drug heads, crack heads, or some shit like that, whatever, or dope heads. They either got murdered. I remember a couple of my friends got murdered while I was still kind of getting out of the life. You know what I mean? One time I had my I had fucking four friends that got shot in a month, got murdered in a month, all friends, two in the same day, all in the same shooting actually. <laughs> so. I did not do the tournaments that, that Khalif uh, did. Um, it just wasn't, for me, an interest of mine to do it. Everybody was going for that little golden gloves and all that, you know what I mean? For me, that wasn't like, that wasn't a sign of you being dominant in, in the sport of boxing, you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, we're just trying to unlock him as a boxer. He still is not at his, at his peak yet, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot more things that he can do better. There's a lot more things that he can do more and take advantage of. And it's just finding himself and gaining that confidence and that little, you know, that ego, that boxer ego, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of times, um, that's why us boxers are very flamboyant and very, like, outspoken and opinionated because that's the way we have to be. We got to believe in ourselves because nobody else, we in the ring. This is a one-on-one -on -one sport. Because you want to land that cross. And you want to land that left hook behind. When you roll, you put your shoulder in, bang, a little short one. <clears throat> his chest downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. That, see, that shit, that's why I kept on and that, that level changing work, that one yeah. coming over the top. Okay, when like you that. said I just, bop, just came out. Mm hmm. That, see, bop, bop. That's that, that step, yeah, that step. No, you did, but to, to come back from that angle, perfect. That was the first? That was the first. Third one was really good, too. Second round was good. Just got caught into, like, his shit this, a yeah. little bit. Pat, pat, right? Pat, 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 right? Yeah. All that. That's all timing right there. What I could do is I could slip and be on one side of the body or the other. Mm -hmm. Kind of staying right. That's why I keep middle. reminding you, right, left, left, right? Yeah. Right? That's where that little... Stepping from over on the other side, I have. Area around me wasn't, it's not too inspiring, you know what I mean? Um, it seems like a cliche kind of story, but that's just reality of the situation. Um, not much motivation, so you, you try to do other things and stay away from certain things, you know what I mean? Like, be home before the street lights come on. You understand what I'm saying? You just, you know, living next door, the building's vacant. This is, you know, what's, what's happening. The building's vacant next door, and you hear somebody, sound like somebody getting tortured in the next room, and then it's like, 
you call your father, like, what should we do? And you know what I mean? You're used to it. You know, that's why it's like, for me to describe it, it's like, it's just something I'm used to. It's like you see certain things every day, you know? My father, he's old school. My parents are old school in general. Um, he grew up in a different place, a different era. He's more old school. He's, uh, he's tough love. He's not, he's not gonna say he love you. He was, was showed in different ways. But when I was growing up, uh, I wasn't the best kid. So whenever I see him, it was more so for discipline. I wouldn't see him throughout the day. He'd only come to discipline me. So my point of view with that is like, uh, it, it builds a lot of anger. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, we, we try to, we try to talk, uh, we try to do certain things, but uh, it never really, it never really got better through time. The average boxer, they have to worry about traveling. They got to worry about, like I said, food. They got to worry about paying the trainer. They got to worry about, you know, buying gear. They got to worry about paying for the membership. So it's a lot of things, a lot of expenses that they have um, and a lot less income. So the risks and the, the hard work that we put in, it's, it's, all, it's all on us. Um, so it's it's it can be a burden for a lot of people and we all take risks you know we sacrifice time we could be working um trying to make money or we could be spending time with family but even as amateurs we still take that risk and, and do what we have to do i had to spend the rest of my savings for um, when i was in california we was literally going day by day we win a fight all right we we pay for the day for the next day we win a fight all right pay for the next day um and, and until you know the tournament was over so it was, a, it was a struggle flying across the country with close to no money. I had money saved up from work, um, but it, it was not enough um, to go. So Mike was like, you know, sorry, go fund me. So I'm not the type of person to really ask anybody for anything, um, let alone money. So it took a lot to do it. I didn't do the go fund me, my income would be the crutch to hurt me. There's guys that, you know, I don't know who they are, but there are definitely are guys that have way more income than me that can afford to go to every tournament, every national tournament in the country. So they have more chances to be exposed, but that's not an excuse or anything like that. We're just, you know, talking about fear and how kids that, you know, are really from certain areas don't get that exposure because they have setbacks, you know? so. It, it really varies from thing to thing, you know what I mean? If we want to talk about society, that's a whole nother, you know what I mean? That's a whole nother topic to, to discuss. And before we begin, we'll have a round of applause for our athletes. They are putting on a great show.
We are also ready in ring three. Red corner from Concord, California. Blue corner from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Luis Joe Ibarra. Everybody has to win their fight in order to become that guy for the team. Even if uh, they have a, you have a prospect that's ranked number one, and that's gonna be the guy, supposed to be the guy, he can lose and somebody else can get that spot. I, I think that's fair. Like you say, if you ask me a question about life and stuff like that, you don't have a second chance in life. You don't. Won a couple of national champs. I think he was, they ranked him number seven, number five in this tournament. So he had a bye, he didn't fight. So that my first fight, he did not fight that day. He fought the second, so he was, he was fresh. Um, but going into that, uh, like, I don't I didn't care. It was just like, what, what style did he have? If he's gonna come this way, that way, you know what I mean? So going into that fight, um, I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive with him. Um, set the tone uh, and, and let my hands go a little bit more. I guess he's somewhat known. So, mm -hmm. you know, judges, they tend to be lean towards somebody in that caliber. His legs did the buckle, and I'm like, yes, I, I yes, didn't want to go in because it. he, he was and so like, like oh. yeah, he's strong. He was strong. He had a little bit of power. But once you taking those legs away, right? Yeah, every yeah. shot that was here was like, oh, oh, it was like you're stabbing him, taking every yeah. bit of energy away. He had a little right? power. There was one where he caught, he caught with a flush right hand, but that's because like, he went in with your left hand. Oh, I try to, I try yeah, to yeah, you try to dip off to the side. But, but even that right hand, I saw. Nah, no, you took it. You didn't. It didn't affect you. Yeah, but those. He could have stopped. He could have got it, right? <laughs> we need one stoppage. <laughs> that was good, good, good point. Very impressive, very good. Of course. We gotta watch that video. We gotta keep doing the same shit tomorrow. Gonna be the same shit the day after. Lego Fernandez. But I checked his Instagram post um, a little bit later. He said he thought he won, which is kind of interesting because I, I knew for a fact. You know, you never know what the judges, but me, myself, I knew for a fact, you know, I won that fight, but, you know, everybody has their own opinion. Uh, I didn't know how his fight went, because we was fighting the same time. I asked him, he said he, he didn't get the decision, um, but he felt some kind of way about it. Um, he felt some kind of way about it. I mean, it's especially him, like he, he really goes hard. You know what I mean? He wants to, in his head, right? How any fight is supposed to be. Just like in my head, he's the best in, in boxing, in his division or whatever, in amateurs or whatever. Um, and he does better than, you know, what the people give him. They don't give him that much credit in his fights. Um, and somebody like him, you know, he gets tired of the amateurs just because of like, Bro, I won this fight and you don't give it to me. It's like, you know what I mean? Fuck this. I'm, I'm gonna get paid for for fighting. You know what I mean? So, uh, think times like that is just like, it's unfortunate. But I appreciate him because he he stayed and he helped corner me and everything like that. They look for younger guys. You know, so you gotta keep that high, you know, and just continue to move forward. Uh, you know, 
Uh, I'm still I'm still trying to figure that out myself. You know, um, I actually quit my job to come here. You know, I've made a lot of sacrifices and stuff. But in the end, you know, it's just about moving on. You know, like you know, regroup, um, regroup when, you know, getting up in the job. You know, I've just lost. You know, like, you know, I'm just gonna continue to keep working hard, you know. Don't let this set me back. You know, I'm good, I'm good, I feel content. You know, I'm just glad to be here. Because, uh, you know, I could have been doing something else. I could have been in the street. You know, I'm a New York kid, you know, so very overpopulated out there, you know, easily to get distracted, but I kept my focus 100%. And at the end of the day, like I said, it's about moving forward, you know, and staying humble, you know, and continuing to work hard, you know, learning from your loss, you know. It's not only a loss, but it's also a learning experience, you know, so I'm grateful either way. Drive, let's move. For, for for on their point of view, they're used to fighting orthodox fighters. That's one thing. They they have so many fights fighting orthodox fighters. They're just used to it. Um, you know, orthodox fighters is not. You know, every now and then you would see a southpaw. Um, that alone makes it difficult. Um, difficult just the experience of fighting them. Um, second is just you. You have to. You go from fighting orthodox fighters, fighting orthodox fighters to not fighting a southpaw. You have to change. Uh, certain things in your mind. Certain punches are different. The way, which direction you move is different. Um, so, you know, you just gotta keep that in mind. Keep your, your front foot on the outside of his. You know what I mean? You wanna get that that extra step over him. You know what I mean? To cut, come with certain combinations and to avoid certain punches. See, just let him, look, you let him come to you. This is all work, pap, all work, pap, all work, pap. See what I'm saying? And he has a rhythm, right? Look. Nice, downstairs. I think Red is taking this run right now. See, you let him reach that little shot. Well, bang, right over the top. Yeah. I think that's one, one right there. That was round two? Yeah, it was round two. Like, I, I don't know how these kids get ranked, dude. <laughs> this is, looks like the same kid, literally. It's the same style of mm. kid. But less punches. You know, less and less punches, right? Less aggressive. Takes his time. Like, how do you fight like that? Taking your time, mm -hmm. doing everything wrong. Like, you, you know what? The judges they might call for the look that he got because he's comfortable and he's relaxed and shit. Yep. But we'll see what happens if he presses the pace. If he presses if the he pace presses to take this pace, round, right. he can do it. That's wild. Yeah. Look, she passed. Kill mm -hmm. Shorty. Yeah. Some shit senseless. That's just crazy. Ran over with the whip, you know. Motherfuckers is different. Motherfuckers <laughs> is different. Well, I'm gonna smoke a victory blunt. Cause I can do that. <laughs> Cause I can do that. I'm gonna scale up in like 10 minutes. I ain't minutes. fighting for shit. Huh? I'm gonna scale up in like 10 minutes. That's all? Friday and Saturday is fucking easy, so. Yo, you done? Man. Well, that's a losing point, too. I know. You have to make sure today you keep your weight good because it's going to get harder every day and you're losing, you're gaining more weight every single day. Yeah. So like, like, you gained two pounds from yesterday, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got to stay on point today and you got to eat shit that's going to only give you energy because yeah. you're murdering yourself doing this every single day and every yeah. night and day. Yeah. That's the last two days you've been doing that. So you got to, you got to check what you eat today. So because tomorrow is a big one, all right? Yeah. Yeah.
So when you ask somebody what's the hardest thing, I'll probably say the hardest thing would be to make that weight for me. Um, only because it's, you know, the, the time period is just so small to cut, especially after a fight. You want to rehydrate to make sure that you're 100% going into the fight. You're not too weak. But at the same time, you really can't do too much because you know you're going to have to cut that weight again at night. So finding that balance between hydrating and cutting, you know, on and off, back and forth, and fighting, you know, dealing with whatever aches and pains that you have, trying to find that balance and trying to do that is probably the hardest thing. My lady. You late? Right. Yeah. How long you guys been together? Like two years. Oh, yeah? But, uh... <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, shit. Nobody knows? I didn't tell. I didn't tell you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good for you. I told Lee that's about it. I'm uh, planning on telling him why you have to. Okay. We were supposed to start at six o'clock. We knew that we we're, were about 14, so we're gonna be maybe an hour or something like that. So we decided, okay, we're gonna leave at seven. Once we left at seven and we're heading over there, we get a text from our guy, Chris, from USA Boxing. He basically told me, telling him we're on about four. So an hour in from when the show started and they're only on about four. Now we just get a text right now saying they're on two bouts after that. So they're on bout six and it's fucking 7.30. So imagine if he would have been there at six or 6.30, this whole time would have been literally nothing going on. You know what I mean? Like, and it's only bout six. By this time, by the time they even get to eight, it'll probably be like 8.15 or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... My body hasn't really activated to like the time frame. It's like, it's 7.30 here. So that means he's close. 10. 10.30, about 11. So I'm stuck still. A little, it's just a little tired. Yeah, so. Fucking fights is fucking taking forever. So it's just like, we got to we gotta be here and procrastinate. I'm not trying to have him sitting around and, and being fucking cold and shit like that. So that's not going to happen. Oh, and nothing, I was hungry. <laughs> I want to get Exactly. Oh my god, you know how good this is? Looking at it. Looking at it ain't gonna do it. <laughs> it's not a nigga. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm
it took me too long to adjust to how he was coming and how he was moving. It took me too long to figure certain things out. Um, so when I got in the corner, Jay was upset. You know what I mean? So he told me, you're not doing X, Y, and Z, and you, you, know, you know what to do, you know, like, do it. And he was, he was slick. He was just like, uh, he would wait for me a lot. He would go off of, or off of me. Um, and when I say that, like, he, he, he wouldn't do anything until I would do something and then I will get caught coming in. So after a while, I, I tried to, like, um, use my movement a little bit more. I believe I caught him, I forgot what round it was. I slipped, I caught him right here, and he stumbled back on the rope. Um, and then I tried to, I tried to, not necessarily go for a finish, but, you know, hurt him as much as I can, you know, get as much points as I can, because that's how they judge it, man, which is go off of points, I guess. I, I didn't achieve what I wanted to. Um, I feel like I didn't get the job done. I didn't do what I came out there to do, and I feel like I, there was a lot of, I feel like I, I wasted people's time, to be honest. It's just one of those where it's like, how how did you lose a fight like this? You know what I mean? You, that's something where you, you could win. It's, it's, a, it's a lonely sport. It's literally just, it's you. Nobody's gonna run for you. Nobody's going to fight for you. Nobody's going to do anything for you. You know what I mean? You might have your team that you trust. You know, they'll, they'll help you with certain things. But everything after that, when they're not with you, it's all on you. You know, for me, if you're not knocking people out, or if you're not young and and and, 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 and active, they don't want to see you make it to that to that to that level. You know, he did everything he possibly had to do, even though he didn't. Even though, even though, even though he didn't solidify, even though he didn't solidify the game plan how coach wanted him to, he won every round, convincingly in my eyes. You know, he did everything he had to do, you know, to win the fight.
you think life is fast? No. No. Um, people, are, people are born, you know, inheriting millions and there's people that have nothing, you know. Um, I don't think any of that is fair, but everybody still has a choice. Everybody's born with free will to do something, you know what I mean? So if you're in a certain predicament, you can get yourself out. It'll be a lot harder, you know what I mean? But there are still avenues that you could take to do better and you know, give yourself a better position to set maybe the next generation up. You understand what I'm saying? So, but as far as life, Nah, certain things aren't fair.